You can't come to San Francisco without visiting Chinatown, and this is the oldest Chinatown in North America. With Kearney Street in the east, Broadway in the north, Powell in the west, and Bush in the south, Chinatown covers more than 24 square blocks and five zip codes. And with more than 175 years of history, it has tales to tell, sips to savor, and flavors to experience. 100 Days Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations is brought to you by... With AMA Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth. Visit Napa Valley. Come with me to stamp your passport to delicious. I'm drinks and culinary expert Leslie Sabraco, and I'm traveling, tasting, sipping, and savoring the world to share my bucket list of palate pleasing experiences. Cheers. On 100 Days, Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations. This is the Dragon's Gate, and it was donated to San Francisco by Taiwan in 1970. It frames the entrance to Chinatown. There's this existing beautiful architecture with festive lights and pagoda elements. And when you're walking on Grant Street, every day of the year is festive because you can shop for gifts and you can shop for antiques and jewelry, and of course, walks. And at the walk shop on Grand Street, I'm here to meet Martin Yan, who is, fortunately for me, guiding me through Chinatown. How are you? Oh, uh, I was just turned to ten. Old friend, even so, it's not old. How long have you been here? Oh, Martin, why do you have to ask that? <laughs> but I'm so proud. 49 years, and oh, I started no. very, very young. Now, the amazing thing a lot of people don't realize, walk is one of the most important utensils in any Chinese kitchen. If you walked in off the street and you said, I want a regular walk, is, this is heavy. This is spun steel. This is what really is this? good. That, the good thing is about it is this, oh, this, this is really good, but you got to season it. Mm -hmm. This is one handle, and this also an handle. So for people like me, not as strong as tame, then you lift it up like this, right. but sometimes not two of these, Originally. you see? Yeah. This is, and then also, this is flat bottom for people to have induction burner or electric ah, burner. Okay. Okay. And then you have one that ah, looks like this, or oh, hand hammer. Look at this. Just look at the size. Look at this. this is the mother walk. This is the baby walk. And this is the grand baby walk. And then you have the well-seasoned walk. This walk says well-seasoned walk. Did it look like this? And this is just yeah. Years see, this of is use? our new walk. Right. This well-seasoned okay. walk. Seasoned walk. And this is a well-seasoned well, walk. Well, well-seasoned walk. In fact, I just got it from Tain's kitchen. This has been used by Tain for yes. 49 years. No. Look at this. This is the one that I want to buy it for you. Brass and oil do not get along. Nothing will stick to brass when you're deep fat frying. It'll just slough off. And then get one of these, and get one of these, and get a season walk, and we can get out of here, and then move on to do something exciting. Hey, man, man. Moonlighting. Screen. Hold it on. Donation. Do you barbecue at home? I barbecue a lot. This is my favorite barbecue place. You have barbecue spare rib, barbecue pork, poached chicken, barbecue duck, and then also soy sauce duck. So a lot of people walking around here, they don't have time to cook at home. Sure. This is come here and pick it up. This is a beautiful piece of roast okay. pork. You see this? Uh -huh. And you can eat it with your hand. Mm -hmm. Now this come from that big piece of pig right there. Look at look at this. In this this has got the barbecue on it. This barbecue pork, okay. and you can taste it. It is mm -hmm. very, very different. Mm -hmm. The texture, the color, and then you eat one, you save half and put it in the fridge. You know? Or the floor. And, oh, look at this. Yeah. This is good. This is roast duck. Mm -hmm. It's moist. Oh, oh. It, it melts in your mouth. 
That is so tender and so delicious and juice, so flavorful. Juicy, juicy, juicy. This is pig's blood, just I like a custard. A little, I need a little Just like cabernet. a jello. You gotta be adventurous. When you come to Chinatown, you have to be prepared to try something you have never, never tasted before. And you know what? It's it's not gelatinous texture. It's got a nice firm texture. Yeah. It's it's almost got a, a little edge of sweetness to it as well. This is yeah. quite good. Now you try this pig skin. I don't like this. You don't like it? No. The taste is quite mild. It's very nice. It's it's like um, almost like a chicken breast taste, but I don't texture. I don't like. This is the first time that I know that Leslie did not like something. So I don't want I don't want to waste it. So I eat it. Mmm, it's delicious. Mm. Oh, you know how I like my pig skin like that. <laughs> That's the way I like my pig skin. Normally, what you do is you soak it until they soften. You put it in soup, put it in stir fry. You can put in all kinds of things. I don't like it like yeah. that. Let's take a look at how they cut up this. Oh, one big knife, oh, whoa! And the skin is so good. You have to know how to use that yeah. knife, don't you? This is really good. Hey, whoa! <laughs> this is one piece for me. <laughs> the, 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 key, the key is, look at this. This is the meat, this is the skin. The skin is crispy. crispy. And then you got the pork, the pork fat. It is absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. They have huge Chinese style barbecue oven. And you take the duck, which is already done. Look at that, they can do about 16 at one time. All of these can be done. So that means you can stock it up in your fridge and the whole week, Monday through Friday, you have something different. Bring it home and invite me and my family and my neighbor to come to your house. We're gonna have something different every day. Walking around Chinatown with Martin is a walk of discovery for me. Martin says that most Chinese diets are based on vegetables and here everywhere shoppers are picking their greens. I mean, this is a Monday. Can you imagine this on a weekend? Packed. Watercress, long beans, I've seen those before. But bitter melon? When, when you cut it open, it's white and green. And then inside there's the seed. You remove the seed, slice it up, put it in boiling water, you stir fry with black bean sauce. This is good to lower your blood sugar. Okay. Lotus root, three kinds of bok choy, so many vegetables. And there are fruits galore. Instead of having sweet, and dessert after the meal. The Chinese always have fruit. Dragon fruit. Okay, oh, dragon fruit. Yep, yeah. dragon fruit. Golden colored dragon fruit. Look at this, golden colored dragon fruit. So inside so the, the golden... flesh looks like this. Yep, you eat it like a salad. You're gonna scoop it out, it's amazing. And then there are the dried goods. A whole store full of dried everything, from shrimp, tiny dried fish, and squid. Scallops at $85 per pound. Sea cucumber. This is so hard, it can kill people with this. They, when, when this is rehydrated, it will be about this big. Not a pretty food. These ingredients are important in Chinese cuisine as they add intense flavor. And as long ago there were no refrigerators, food was preserved by salting, pickling, or dehydrating. Bamboo shoots to fungus, to mushrooms, small and very large. This is actually one dry wood ear. This is Ling Ji. This wood ear, wood fungus. So you would only take a little piece off yes, and you'd yep. grind it up. That's grind. why it's so expensive. And steep it like a tear, yep, cook yep. it in soup. for tea. soup. And this is one of my favorite, dry tangerine peel. Now you have $96 a pound, $216 a pound, and $338 a pound. <laughs> now, what's the difference? Yeah. Because the age and the different area. You, you scrape it, the, the skin, and smell it again. And then the fragrance. It's just like a fresh tangerine would smell. Do you go to China yes. and find all of these yes. and bring them back? Yes. You feel good? I feel fabulous. <laughs> you see? You feel good just smelling these exotic flavor and aroma. We're gonna go to the bao, the big bao. Bao means bun. Ah, oh, the smell. Oh, it smells yeah. like freshly baked fresh. bread in here. You just get this. Amazing aroma. This is, I call it the big bao, the giant bao. La, barbecue pork. Barbecue is nice and moist and delicious, and this is moist and soft. Just like fresh bread, mm. straight from the oven. And then they have the vegetable and meat bun. And this, you see, looks like a leaf. Let me show you, when you open, there's a piece of paper. Unless you're really hungry, don't eat the paper, okay? Mm. Ah, up to you. Mm. Delicious. It's almost like the filling in a pot sticker. Yeah, yeah. 
Say ho ho sing. 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 Delicious. Delicious. It is. Ho ho sing. And this is a dessert bun. Look at how big this is. I can tell. My buns are gonna look like after eating all these. Oh. And look at that. Wow. Egg yolk, sugar, and butter. Mmm. Delicious. That's my kind of dessert. This is one of the very few places to have such giant bao. All kind of bao, see? They have char siu bao, chao yuk bao, gay bao, all kind of bao. Little all things are bao. Bao, 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 bao. Egg bao, a bao, a lot of bao. Ah, that's what it is. Oh, it's delicious. I'm, you know, I'm shopping a little bit right you're now. You're always smiling. You must be happy. You must have a sweet tooth. I, I, of and course. That's why we stopped here, the dragon beer candy. Look, Look at, at that. You see those little hair? It's pulling by cornstarch and molasses. So this is the base, molasses. OK. So this molasses is a little bit concentrated than the regular one. OK, yeah. Start with one and become two, two to four, four to you six. Know, I actually went to Martin's restaurant, and Chef Tony taught me how to pull yeah. the noodles. But this one is much finer and delicate than that. That's why in the past, the dragon beer candy was only made to the emperor. It's like the royal desserts. Because my great, great, great grandfather used to make this in the Beijing Palace for the emperor. Oh my God. And you saw those little powder is not the sugar powder, it's the cornstarch. I need to keep pulling the cornstarch on the molasses, make sure it won't stick together. Now oh, it is amazing. We are this. here, yeah, we're almost thousands, there. Yeah. Thousands, okay. almost there. And then you break it up into smaller batch. Okay, and then you put the filling. The filling can be anything. This one is nut. Peanut, peanut, coconut, and sesame seeds yeah. mixture. Yeah. So be sure everyone okay with nuts, no allergy, okay? Yeah. Yeah. That will be great. So you'll be the first one to try there, this patch, okay? I'm ready. Okay, okay, here you go. It is, it's very soft. Yeah. Oh, look, I do have a little. Mm. And now you're eating the bite. Look at the dragon beer, <laughs> look at that. Oh my God, that's good. Yeah. It turns back into being a little more dense and chewy as you it put it into your candy. mouth. It's not really sweet like cotton no, candy really or coffee. Sweet. You've got more of that nutty, coconutty kind of character yeah, yeah. to it. You eat it, you put it in your mouth, and you go. <laughs> this is how you eat it. I'm much messier than Martin. I think Leslie is creating a commotion in Chinatown because we are serving Dragon's beer brought Dragon to us by beer candy. In the mood for more than quick tastes and treats? Places like New Asia Restaurant have it covered. Here you'll find dim sum and dim sum, and then a whole lot of, well, you'll see. I want the full Martin Yan take me through dim sum experience. Yeah, normally when you have dim sum, they normally serve breakfast or lunch. The first thing you do is you also call yam cha, means you drink tea. You always serve tea with dim sum. And then? And then? You're the expert. You know the tradition. <laughs> when people pull you tea, normally the host would do that. You always go like this. And the Here. history of that is because it's like bowing. You like somebody, bowing because it? in the old days, the emperor mm -hmm. went out of the capital and then in uh, regular clothes. Right. And then somebody recognized him, but wouldn't dare to say anything. Just go like so this. They just do bowing. that. Bowing. Just say, wow, your highness. <laughs> okay. So that's thank you. And here, tea. Drink to it. Mm. Now in a dim sum restaurant, dim means point. So dim means point. Sum is your heart. Dim sum. I want something that delights my heart. Yes, the heart's delight. Now we're going to try it out. Melika, you ask them what they, what they are. This is chiu jiao dumpling. Then you point to it. Chicken feet. Chicken feet. You eat more of these, you run faster. <laughs> this is spare rib with rice noodle. And then you put a tiny bit of soy sauce. Now look at this, so far, it's all steamed. Oh, before we talk about it, more of these. Steam bun with Peking duck, it's amazing. Okay. And, right there. and then bite into it, it's beautiful. You've got the crunchiness of the skin, the savory meat, and then the moist, soft, spongy bread. That has got a little place in my heart, this, this dim sum. This is fantastic. Can I go in for the chicken feet? Yeah, go in the chicken feet first. You use your lips, okay. your tongue and your teeth okay. to separate the bone and the rest. Boom. Okay. Patient, patient. 
Actually, nothing wrong with, with using your finger. You just use your lips, mm -hmm. your tongue, and your tea to separate. Ooh, that's got now, a nice spicy Also kick. try the rice noodle. Stir fry with chili, look at the chili. Look at everybody here. This is a social activity, isn't it? People get together with buddies and neighbors and they just chit chat Saturday, Sunday. The whole family will come three generations, four generations. This place is packed. This place can hold 900 people. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, look at mine. These are for the end, right? This is sweet and this is, you can eat it as savory and also as a sweet. This is how you pay for it, look at this. Mm -hmm. When you order this, they will have a little stem to stem it. Ah, that's how they do it, I was yes. wondering. Yeah, look at this. The small, so much. Medium, so much. So you order, this is big. Right. This is big. This is small, small, and small. And those are the red ones. Yeah, the red one costs a little more. Now this, what that? this is a shrimp with a shredded dumpling, spring roll. And then this is sesame seed bar bun. Now this Stop. is this is deep fry, <laughs> deep fry, and deep fry. This is uh, broccoli chard, oyster flavor sauce. Yeah. And then you cut it easier for you ah, to use. Chard. That's much nicer cut it in because half. it's hard yes. to eat. And then they have a roast yeah, duck. Last, last, that's enough. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> the best way to have dim sum is not coming by yourself or with your significant other, but with about four or five friends. Mm -hmm. The more people, the more variety you can try. And they're constantly popping up new items. A lot of chefs go to work in Japan, the Middle East, to India. So they bring Spain. those influences. Right, they bring the influence. And there are up to 150 different dim sum items. And I noticed you used the back end. When yep. you were serving, you turned your chopsticks around yep. to help serve. The reason is because right? when you eat, you eat with this. Right. When you turn it upside down, this is not contaminated. Right. Because you're not eating with this. So you right. can use this to give it to your friends, like right. this. That's great. And I'll have to say, to coming, coming to Chinatown with you and this insider look at Chinatown is really special. Thank you, Martin. Cheers. Cheers. Yum cha. Yum cha. I've learned so much today. Wandering the streets of Chinatown, you really experience the community. And it's a community that has faced many hardships through its history. From Portsmouth Square, located on the site of the first public square, in what was then called Yerba Buena, the city became San Francisco in 1847. Now it's thought of and is nicknamed the heart of Chinatown. It's a community gathering space with places for card games, musical performances, and the bridge to the Chinese Cultural Center. There are surprises too as you wander the streets. Colorful painted architecture, lanterns, temples, and the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory, where they've been making fortune cookies by hand since 1962. Every day the batter is made and baked, and each cookie has to be filled with a fortune and folded within four seconds. And they are hot. While the origins of the fortune cookie are still debated, they're a fun treat familiar to all. On the hunt for more Chinatown treasures, I take Martin's recommendation to visit Uncle G. He's the amazing 89-year-old owner of Vital Tea Leaf on Grant Street. Leslie! Uncle G! The minute I met him, I knew I was in for serious tea enlightenment. What we want to do is to open a tea bar where you could sit down and purify your body. And each tea is for something. So somebody can come in and say, oh, my feet are sore, my back yeah. is sore, I have high blood pressure, and you have a yes. tea for then that. Yes, we explain to it. Of course, we're not doctor. But we've been drinking tea for 6,000 years. So this is the tea you're gonna drink now. First okay. thing I do, you smell it. It's Iron Goddess, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful tea to drink. This is one tablespoon of tea leaf. That will give you a cup of tea. Now, you have to rinse your tea leaf. Anytime hot water touch it, it take out what we call the garlic acid, the bitterness of the tea. It take out 60 to 70% of the caffeine. This is what we call a gaiwan. The gaiwan is that we're flipping the water, that the water is moving, and the tea have a chance to breathe out. And water in, water out. Most important thing, never put boiling water in your tea. It destroy all the antioxidants of the tea. Now this is very aromatic. It has almost a, a, a white floral aroma yeah. to it. And it's then a, it's got a lovely softness. Yeah, it's a very nice, gentle tea to mm -hmm. drink. I then tasted a wide variety of teas from light and gentle to the dark and earthy pu'er. This one has the pu'er tea stuffed into a tangerine skin. Pu'er tea is a black tea, and they buried this thing 
in the ground for seven years. This is the only kind of tea that have unlimited shelf life. Older the tea really? is, the better it tastes. You could use half, okay. Now, what do I do first? Smell it. Oh, it smells like orange. That's the only seven. Now, this mm. is 15 year old. 15 year old. 15. It's much more intense, richer, heavier, more full body. That's right. It's a tea called milk oolong. You like butter popcorn? I do. It does. It smells exactly like butter popcorn. popcorn. Mm. Very much. Smooth and silky, but there's a there's a kick of, of citrus right. almost on the finish too. And this very milky like. I'll have to tell you, this was an amazing education for me. We we'll always tell people when you come to my house, you came in as a stranger, now you leave as a family. Gambe. Gambe. All right. And there are new places being created too. China Live is an eatery with cooking stations serving seasonal foods, as well as an elegant fine dining restaurant. Here, famed chef George Chen takes a step back in time to serve his private chateau cuisine, as it was served in the great cities of China decades ago. I'm at eight tables. Hi, Leslie. How are Hi, you? Good to have you here. Thank you. Welcome great to, to be here. Family photos. Yes, that's me and my parents, and uh, that's my grandparents and I when I was little. This is all reminiscent of uh, the merchant class or the, you know, the elites and how they wanted to dine. Each booth, each table is very secluded and private. Yes, and people want a little more privacy when they're dining and they're more comfortable. Everything about this place is understated elegance. Chinese food is the first ethnic cuisine that most Americans enjoy, you know, uh, when people went out for ethnic food. You know, 50, 100 years ago, they went to Chinese restaurants before Mexican and Italian restaurants. And it's still very popular, but the food hasn't evolved. And so I just wanted to change the perception of Chinese food on an elevated basis. People talk about farm to table. I mean, Chinese been doing that forever, except the Chinese restaurants in this country for the last, you know, 100 years. This is artwork, George. Thank you. This is artwork, well, Chef. We always like to start a Chinese banquet with uh, cold appetizers. This beautiful china is fired in France and glazed in China based on different dynasties like Yuan, Song, Ming, and so forth. And this pattern of nine, in a, nine circles in a square is called a Lo Su Square. It goes back thousands of years. I said, hmm, let's uh, do some cold appetizers, but let's have some fun with it. So I'm the first one to actually curate that I know of to curate the nine essential flavors of Chinese cuisine. Tian xian, suan ku, ma la, sheng xian, shring. Sweet, salty, sour, bitter, this one's numbing, tingling. Spicy hot, fragrant nutty, sharp fresh, and smoky. Beautiful. Tony is our uh, wonderful wine director here. Champagne is wonderful across a broad array of flavors. Well, I have to start with the egg larva. I'm gonna go sweet first. The sweetness is just ever so present. I'm gonna go over here. I'll follow you. This brings me to the seaside. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm walking on a beach. Smoky. Smoky, it is. I like, I like your path. It's smoky and crunchy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is heavenly. I Thank you. Admit. The whole dish comes out to me as a painting, and each one of these are colors and brush strokes, and you've really put together uh, a gorgeous piece of artwork. Harmony in Chinese cuisine is very important. Not every Chinese dish comes out of a wok. My immersion into Chinese culinary history continued with four seas dumplings dolloped with caviar and uni. Mm. And Chinese barbecue. That is yummy. The Eight Immortals, a Buddhist vegetable feast. Okay, candied shiitake. Oh my God, that is amazing. And China's prized rice accompanying pork belly. It's like pork perfume. Truly a mm. world-class dining experience. Gambe. That means bottoms up. <laughs> This whole adventure to San Francisco's Chinatown has been enlightening for me. I mean, even though I taste and eat and drink for a living, I've opened myself up to new tastes, new sights, new sounds, and 
It shows you that you have to be adventurous. You have to try the exotic. You have to take the bite of the unique, even though you might not want to, because guess what? You might find your new delicious. Gambe. 100 Days Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations is brought to you by... With Ama Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth, visit Napa Valley. For more information on all episodes, along with our expanded digital series, including behind the scenes footage and stories, and links to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, go to 100 Days Drinks Dishes Destinations.com. I've known you for so long. You gotta let it go. Buy it. You gotta let it go. Okay, it's gonna be ten times more than the price of a normal yeah. walk. Right, the normal walk is about a dollar, so I'll give you ten bucks. <laughs> Exercise your lip. <laughs> Exercise. Now, this takes a lot of practice. Again, you've got that little crunch, that little heat, that, oh, here's the tingle. Okay. Ooh. There it is, right? <laughs> you drink wine? I do. I drink lots of wine. Mm-hmm. I'm actually 75, you'd never know. <laughs> I'm kidding.